Hello everyone and welcome back to Astrox Imperium. This is devlog video number 99. We are taking a look at build 129 and today's date is the 7th of February 2022. All right, lots of stuff to show you. I'm going to try to cram it all in pretty quick, so bear with me. All right, um, there was a number of issues happening with the fabricators and the refinery where they were not processing their items properly when you undocked. So that has now been fixed and adjusted, and this both, both applies to the fabricator and the refinery. Um, now that seems to be working properly. And there was also another issue with size limitations for the fabricator and refinery. So you'll now notice that your if you go into the station storage, it will tell you how much of a bonus you're getting, and that just happens to be exactly 50% of whatever your max storage space is. So if you have a max storage of, let's say, 10,000, then you're going to have a max refinery of 5,000 and a max fabricator of 5,000. So you get half of whatever you're, you've rented space-wise with the storage inventory. All right, so now we are going to jump into the university, and there was um, an update recently where training a skill no longer refreshes this list well i've carried that over into the marketplace when you are purchasing items so now let's say we go into active modules and i scroll down a little bit and i decide to purchase a level eight laser or something i can actually use a generic 20 millimeter gun and i purchase it you'll notice that the market information changes instantly the pricing is adjusted the quantity is adjusted and there is no longer any scroll that is happening. Um, another really interesting and long awaited quality of life improvement is the ability to shift click select. Um, you used to be able to hold shift and click but it would function as if you were holding control where you're just single selecting so if I skip that one and then I click that one I'm getting that that gap. Well now shift click will allow you to select everything in between so I can click that and then hold down shift and then click that and then boom now I've got all of those items selected. And then another little feature I've added if you hold down the A button while you click I'm sorry control A while you click it'll select all the items on a panel. So you just hold down control hold down the A button click anything just like that. All right, so you can now, we'll do a little shift click to the end there, drag them over here, shift click to the end there, drag them over here. We can control A click all of these and drag them over here, control A click all of those, drag them over here. So that is working nice and neat. I know you guys have been asking for that for some time. Um, another thing that we need to talk about is some stuff going on with the overlay panels. You basically have, you know, the by playing the game, you really don't notice what's happening. But if I click an object, say, let's see if we see anything floating nearby that's close. Let me hit space bar and zoom out. Okay, so we got some rocks over here. So if I click an object, and I am currently, I believe, I am in single, single click autopilot. No, I am in double. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna disable that just so I can show you how this works. All right, so by single clicking any item or any object that's in space, then immediately my targeting will select that item, right? The item that I've clicked. So if I click over here, now the autopilot immediately takes me there. And the reason that's happening is because I have single click autopilot enabled. If I check that double click, then all of a sudden it's gonna require two clicks. However, prior to 129 clicking these items in tactical was behaving a little bit differently and then not just clicking those items but clicking on the actual circle versus clicking on the actual object so if you were to double click on the object like that you see it's going to take me to that object clicking on any object that i do not have in my target scanner will immediately um, scan that target. Clicking it for the second time will automatically turn on my autopilot and take me to that object. Now when you switch over to the double click, all the same rules apply except now you can select targets by clicking without worrying about changing your autopilot. 
So I just wanted to explain that to everybody in detail so they understand exactly how it works. So now you can see I can click all these targets, but I'm still flying to that location. If I double click, now it changes. If I do that in tactical sensors, the exact same behavior is being applied now. If I accidentally or deliberately click outside of that ring, whether I'm in tactical or not, let's see, I'm clicking that rock. I'm not clicking on the circle. I'm just clicking the rock. Let me see if I can get, there we go. So clicking on the rock and not clicking on the circle. Prior to 129, all of these things were behaving slightly differently and it was just causing some problems. So now that has been addressed and those have been fixed. Okay, um, what is something else that we need to go through? Oh yeah, this is a good one. So you guys have been talking to me about stuff going on with the ship orbiting. So what's happening now is you can see I have, I'm just changing my angle a little bit, get all these guys going. I have my orbiting turned on and I'm just orbiting around the rock and it's keeping me just at about 300, which is what I have it set to. If I jack that up a little bit, it's gonna space me out further away. Yada, yada, you guys know all of this stuff. But now what's happening is when you have your orbit turned on and you click to go to a station, it will still orbit that station, but it's going to completely ignore your distance and go all the way in so that you can still activate the station. If you have auto dock turned on, no problem. However, if you want to orbit the station or you want to orbit any usable um, object, that would be stations, structures that you can dock at, warp gates that you can use and warp through, and crates that you can open. You can toggle this right here, toggle orbit usables. And what that says is ignore that, that, um, that default that says, but let's bypass whatever you have set here and go back to this. If it so happens that you're in the correct distance, then it'll still dock. But if for some reason you have this jacked up really, really high, then that's going to be a little bit different. Now in this update, for some reason, I was able to have this working perfectly in the Unity editor and I didn't notice until afterwards. But for some reason, you are not able to type in the numbers here when, once the game was compiled. So that is a bug that's floating out there. I will, I will take care of that. I want you to be able to type in exact ranges and things into this. But for now, you can really adjust this and, and get these up to high numbers, especially when you're dealing with uh, combat ranges, trying to make sure that you know, you're, you're staying as far away from the enemy ships and missiles as possible. Um, so yes, this is working a lot better now. Um, if you want it to save some of these features, you're going to need to copy some of those parameters out of your out of the uh, new player um, options file that is created when you create your character. If you don't want to hassle with any of that, you could always import your character into a new game or you could just start a new sandbox game or whatever you're playing it will automatically put those variables in there. If you need any help with any of that, hit us up on Discord or, or the forums and, and somebody will help walk you through it real quick. It's very, very simple and it's not complicated at all. All right, let's see. I know there were a few more little things that I wanted to go over before I jump into the sandbox stuff. I'm trying to think of what they might be. I can go over here and check my notes. Let's see, um, one of the things that has changed, and, and this applies, I'll talk about this more with the sandbox later, is the, um, the GPS pathing. So that has now been adjusted and manipulated and it is functioning much, much better. Super thank you and shout out to Amphos on the Discord for helping me put together an algorithm that did exactly what I needed it to do and was doing it in the most efficient way possible. Because when I started splitting up those warp gates, things started to get a little bit hairy. All right, let's see. Anything else? I did make some... I'm, I'm going to show you guys this because I've been starting to play around with um, the weapons and, and making sure that things are functioning the way that I want them to. And missiles was something that needed to be addressed, needed some love. They were just too janky and too jerky and just some things were not correct about that. So I spent some time fooling with them and I think I got something. Okay, good. I got a whole bunch of missiles here. I think I got something that, that's working out pretty decent. Um, I may have to spawn some stuff in here. Let's go ahead and load up these missiles. Let's see what I got. Yeah, I got, I got a little bit of stuff. Nothing, nothing too major. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spawn us some raiders here so I can show you how these missiles are working. All right, aside from the missiles AI themselves and the targeting systems that the, the missiles have, I made changes to the way the launchers behave and the timers and things associated with those launchers. So uh, let's go like that. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Get over there. Now, with all of these guys, let's turn this down to like, I don't know how close my my missile range is going to be, but we're going to put it at like 2,400 for now. It might not be that far. Max range 2,250. Okay, so basically what's happening, oop, you know what? I'm going to die because these guys are a little spawny. So I'm going to switch into God mode here so that I don't die. Okay, so basically what's going to happen, I have the game paused, what's going to happen is as these launchers down here completely charge up with their missile, when they fire, what was happening prior to 129 is they were immediately recharging as they were firing missiles. That is no longer the case. The missile fire rate has been drastically reduced and it's based more on the level of launcher and then also the um, energy does not start to recharge for the next cycle rate until the last missile has fired. So that kind of slows down the missiles a little bit and their, you know, bombardment. It still has the same effects, you know, visually and you still get to see a whole bunch of stuff flying and exploding on the screen. But it's just buying you a little bit more time. And the reasoning for that is because I've added in this, which is the ECM target scrambler is now scrambling missile targets. So if it detects it within range when the scrambler fires off any missiles within range, including your own will be scrambled and they'll fly off in different directions and try to find dormant targets and nonsense. So let's go ahead and turn this back on. We can watch how this works. So the missiles are behaving a lot better the way that they're flying. Yeah, it's a little bit hairy watching all. So you can see how the missiles are flying off. But as the missiles are launched, as soon as they spin around and I get a target here, am I even, I don't even have anybody targeted, do I? Let's get that guy. All right, so you'll see all the missiles have to fire before it will recharge. Let's see if we can get this guy over here. This might help. There we go. And there we go. Ooh, lost a mercenary. Those torpedoes in formation can get, uh, can really start dropping some damage. You can see it's hurting everybody there. But anyway, so missiles are now behaving a little bit differently, and I absolutely love it so far. Damn, I got everybody killed. Luckily, it don't matter. This was just a test account that I've been playing with. Um, hopefully, I'll be putting together some new tutorial videos and some, uh, some new stuff. I'm trying to get to uh, some footage for uh, a new trailer. All right, so let's go ahead and quit back to the title screen. And let me show you what is going on in the sandbox because there's quite a bit of craziness going on there. Um, a lot of things have changed. The way that the scripts are generating the items and putting all those things together are absolutely uh, um, a lot more improved. They're, they're much better than they were. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice is you can put in a seed here. And if you go into your presets and you save anything, your seed will be saved into that preset so that if you want to keep generating the same types of map or the same galaxy, you can if you want to tie it to a, a particular preset. And, you know, you can manually get up there and change that or just type out something random. It doesn't have to be a full, you know, eight digits long or whatever. You can you know type smaller numbers in all it's doing is is setting the randomization algorithm that the generator is going to use before these items are generated so that the randomness occurs the same way every time if it has the same seed uh loading up the sandbox generator will automatically reset that seed into something you know unique so if you don't mess with it it will automatically reset itself all right let's jump into galaxy and then you'll notice that here the sector layout has changed uh, we've got a butterfly or, you know, like a star-like pattern, a uh, four-pointed star. Um, then we have the rounded. We have a grid. We have a spiral. 
we have cluster and random everything but spiral is currently being based off a grid matrix and that allows me to do a number of different things uh, creating faction blobbing and clustering things together so that the factions are generating closer together um, it also allows for all the warp gate connections to be closer so what this new system is doing is preventing the problem with warp gate lines constantly overlapping and reaching out into crazy parts of the galaxy now that's not the case anymore so what we're going to do is generate that but before we do we're going to go into warp gate links and jack that up this is the maximum number of links that will be connected to any particular sector now if we go down here to gate frequency this used to be toll frequency and that has now changed to gate frequency with a secondary modifier that um, that makes changes to the way that the prices are set for different toll gates all right so we're going to go into what do we need to go into it's not warp gates is galaxy there we go show unexplored sectors this one has also changed um, it used to be two parameters it's now three you have hide unexplored meaning that it's not going to show anything that you haven't explored yet show unexplored that's where you get that little tiny dot showing you that there's a sector there you just don't know where the gates link to and, and like you haven't explored it yet and then this new one is all explored and this will generate it so that everything is explored as if you visited every area on the map so we're going to do this for the purposes of this test just so you can see how things are laid out and we're going to jump into the spiral layout now this one's a little bit different than the grid this will generate something more along the lines of a spider web so let's go ahead and do that one and we'll hit go and you'll notice this has changed before we had some stuff in the center now i've broken it off to the side so that you can actually see the statistics and watch them update live as it is generating your universe um this did have a little bit of debugging used to me but i just thought it was cool and decided to leave it there um hopefully you guys think it's cool too all right once this generates up it's going to dump us in and i will show you how the galaxy map layouts are being done differently in the galaxy map view than in the campaign view and that will be changing i will be going back and um, modifying the campaign view sector locations so that they function the same way that they do in the sandbox all right so we're going to zoom out here and you can see that we've got this interesting spirally funnel cone looking thing but if you flatten it like that, you can see plain as day, we start to get this weird spidery web effect. Um, the number of gate links, we think we had it set to three max or maybe even four. Yeah, four max. So you can see the maximum times any sector can be connected to and the frequency at which that occurs is all adjustable within the sandbox. All right, so that's what that looks like. You will also notice that there are some white sectors. These are unclaimed sectors. Now, if you happen to run into a station in one of those sectors, that station will be randomly generated to any one of the 18 factions, not just locked into the normal six. So if you're looking for a non-main faction station, the only place you will find them is out here in the dust, in the unclaimed sectors. As you get bigger maps, you'll start to notice that that also changes. And then, you know, checking, you're noticing that the security of these areas, this new spiral technique is keeping everything, you know, nice and tight in the center. That's all safe. And then as you get to the outer bands, things get more dangerous. Uh, same thing with environment. Um, and there's nothing that's going to show here because this has all been explored and we have no missions but it basically is giving you an idea of how these things are being clustered together all right so we're going to jump out and i'll generate one more for you guys and explain what the grid ones are like and then we'll wrap this video up i want to give a shout out at this time to uh, a lot of the guys on discord that have been helping me out helping me track down bugs and, and fix different things and i really appreciate it uh, you know, I know it's it's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes to nail me down so we can cut through them. But when we do, we absolutely do. All right, let's jump back in the sandbox and let's take a look and see what we can't do this time. Going to presets, let's hit my butterfly and let's see if I've got everything set. Let's turn that to on. We're going to do the butterfly one. We'll do 50 sectors. So that just kind of makes a star shape. 
but it'll give you an idea on how this is working. Um, we'll jack up the wart gate links so that Max it can have his eight, and we'll make it pretty frequent and see how that plays out. All right, let's generate that. Ooh, that's a bright screen. Like I said, I've been going through and trying to get things ready to um, revamp all of the older images on Steam and replace the trailer videos with the new stuff so that what people are looking at is an actual representation of what you're able to do in the current build because those things get outdated pretty quick. All right, looks like we're almost there. We've got about 10 gates left to go. And then we can take a look at what we got. So the butterfly is still a grid, but what it's doing is just creating like the edges, the edges of the sectors form points so that it's not rounded and all connected together. Where if you go to the rounded layout, it does the opposite of that. Rather than trying to make these things get all pointed out towards the sides, it rounds them all in so that it's more of a smooth transition in some areas. It can form teardrops, it, you know, it does it randomly. But as you can see, there's a lot, of, a lot less gate crisscrossing when you start to play with, you know, if you jack it all the way up to, to seven or eight, I think you will get those, these crossbars between these two sectors. But it's only linking up the closer sectors, and it just makes the map a lot easier to read. So I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, I think that pretty much sums everything up that I needed to discuss and talk about in this video. Um, over the next couple weeks, I'll be fixing any little bugs with these introductions. I've got a few interesting ideas for some more defensive type modules that will be the counters to all the different weapons. So aside from actually getting, you know, resistance to that damage type, you will be able to, you know, get a module that can, you know, blast lasers out, shoot down missiles for you, you know, types of defensive. They, they have no attack capabilities. They're just there to defend against particular types of attack. So I'll be playing with that a little bit. And as always, finishing up some of the structures and, you know, just plugging in some of the little tiny scripts for these uh, NPCs with the side quest stuff. And hopefully if we have a good couple of weeks here, maybe in an update or two, we can just start pushing forward on the, all the storyline. Because uh, I'm starting to run out of other things to fix and other things that need addressed. So we're just going to play it by ear. And, and as we make progress in that direction, then we'll decide when the, when the time is right. I figure I just kind of, I'll know when it's time. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, make sure you hit that like button so the algorithms will share me. And I will see you guys in about two weeks. Until then, Momoguru signing out.